So let's start with the first thing. As far as our young people today, of all, age, of all ages, right from the 13 year olds up to the 30 somethings, young people today are born digital. They're grown up mobile. And for you, life is unlimited possibilities. And it's completely borderless. When we were in school, we used to think with boundaries. I don't think boundaries mean anything to you guys. Boundaries are non-existent. Geography is history. It's really out there. You are people who are limit limitless in the possibilities. And that fact that you are all born digital, a question to ask is if you are creating a business here in Nagaland or anywhere in the country, are you having a business that is also born digital? Because if you are dealing with a customer who knows nothing else except connecting virtually, getting information online, are you ready as an organization, as a group of people to have a business that is also born digital and is willing to deal with this group of people? The second is very interesting. It says that you guys are a remix generation. Why is a remix generation? A remix generation because you are rooted in your immense love for everything that you, that you, that you own locally. At the same time, you have an immense appreciation of the foreign. So when you have to mix the love for the desi and the appreciation for the foreign, are we creating brands that mix the two as well? Are you creating products that are as aspirational as something that sells on the streets, high streets of London, at the same time are made and uniquely Naga in their perspective? So if you have a unique Naga product, is it as aspirational to sell on the high streets of London as it would on the streets of Dimapur? And perhaps at the same time give you enough value and pride in doing both. So if we are dealing with a remix generation, is your business a remix business as well, which allows you to do both as aspirational as the other? The third is that you guys, as young people today, live your life on display. You socialize every minute. And for you, it's not the language of English. It's not the language of Nagamese. It's the language of the visual story. The visual story is your language. It's not a communication of a word. It's the, it's the broadcast of a visual story. Are we as businesses ready to talk that language? Are we talking the language of the visual story that our customers of tomorrow are, are happy to deal with? That's what their communication is. They don't communicate with words anymore. They communicate with pictures. They communicate with the visual Instagram stories. They communicate with stories that they put out on Twitter. That is the language of their visual story. Are we giving them, are we speaking their language or are we still broadcasting in media that perhaps are alien to all the people who are perhaps sitting apart from the first two rows? The fourth is all of the young generation today, the young consumers are experience seekers. They don't care a damn about owning things. They care about experiencing things. Are we creating an experience economy? When I give my farmers today product, I create experiences even in an agricultural product. If my packaging self-dissolves in water, does not leave any plastic out there, it gives him an experience. If my product smells like biscuits and not like ugly fertilizers, it gives him a sensory branding because I put butterscotch flavor in it just because I want it to smell good because that is talking to the senses. Have I created an experience about with my brand or am I just selling a product? Nobody cares about owning a product. They care about seeking out an experience. The fifth one is all, all customers today are loyal to brands that allow self-expression. Do you allow self-expression with your brand? Do you allow your brand to become something that you can customize? Can I make something which every guy sitting in this room, every girl sitting in this room can make truly their own? 
So for instance, in Mumbai, I'll give you an example. Uh, we have a stupid ban at 10 p.m. for loud music, okay? Which means people cannot party beyond 10 p.m. So what do the Indian, the Indian youth in Mumbai do? Did they say no party? Obviously not. We party, we party a lot. But we now have silent parties, which basically mean they take headphones, which have playlists on them, and they will all be in a big room with headphones on their head, changing music on their personal preferences, and they will be dancing in the same room to different scores of music and having a fantastic time. In the process, today they don't go based on who the DJ is, they, be, they go based on what the playlist is in that party. They don't cause a ruckus. At the same time, for each person in that party, and there may be 500 of them, the music they played is different and the experience is personal. So your experience with that party is very different from someone else's because you're listening to something that you want to do. And therefore people keep going back to the same places simply because it allowed them to self-express themselves. It was their self-expression. It was not someone thrusting something down your throat. It was your personal, personal experience. Do you provide as a company, as a brand, a canvas for self-expression? Because if you do that, you will empower your customer. And if you empower your customer, you will enslave him. And he will keep coming back again and again because you made him feel good. And you did it just because you allowed him a canvas for self-expression. That's one other very, very unique trait. Another is our customers today are data inspired. They are inspired and informed with data. Both inspired and informed with data. Are you providing enough information to your customers to make them data inspired? Without data, data is a new oil. I've heard you've heard that. Like oil was very valuable, today data is valuable. Are you providing or creating enough data to data spire your customers. Our customers today are collaborators by nature. Do you as a brand allow, you, allow them to collaborate with each other, to talk to each other, to, 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 to work together and build the brands? Do you allow something that allows collaboration? The next one is perhaps the most, the one I love the most, is today our customers live in crowd cultures of fandoms. Fandom, it's a fandom, it's not a kingdom anymore. Earlier we had kingdoms, today we have fandoms. Because you're fans of certain games, you're fans of certain people you follow online, you are crazy about what this person does and you will follow and imitate everything that a person does, you are all today part of fandoms. Groups of people that align and do everything that some person you really love does. Do you agree? All the people behind, do you agree? That you are all part of some fandom or the other. As you, as a company, are you creating such fandoms? Is your brand a fandom? Or, if you don't have to create one, are you aligning with enough people who have fans and make them talk about your brand? You don't need to create a brand all the time, a fandom all the time, but are you aligning with fandoms? Because these kids behind, are not looking at a mass media publication anymore. For them, it's their fandom. Tomorrow, if there is this artist or this music guy uh, who, who belts out some great tunes, uh, writes about something or changes his hat from Nike to Adidas for some reason, all of them will now become Adidas fans. Not because they've experienced this, because the fandom now demands it. Okay, or they will kind of wear the certain clothes or whatever just because the fandom does it. So are we aligning with those fandoms? Or are we creating some of them all? Ninth one, all our customers today are smart shoppers. For them everything has to be personal. It's me-tailing, it's not retailing. It's me-tailing. Are you creating me-tailing opportunities where a customer can come to a store and customize exactly what he or she is getting? And lastly, our customers are extremely, extremely confident about the causes they believe in and they will do anything to 
go behind those causes. So if someone is really keen on the environment or someone is extremely keen about uh, certain other causes, are you as a brand aligning with those causes and therefore these people will say, yes, this person does something that is really meaningful. And these customers will align to people who recognize causes that they believe in. The reason I told you about these 10 points is because when I was asked to talk about branding, I can't come out here and give you a generic prescription of any brand. I can't because I don't know the brands that you own. At the same time, I believe that customers today, and I hope all of you with the nodding heads I see around the, around the amphitheater, agree with a lot of these 10 points, is that these 10 things are where the customers today behave, the way you and I behave today. But are we creating brands in the archaic old ways? Or have we aligned ourselves to these new ways of doing business? And well, the moment we do that, we will have a brand that actually is customized, that provides a unique experience, that empowers my customer, and by virtue of empowering them, has enslaved them in a way that can never be done in any other form of uh, way or form. All of this really builds up a brand that is unique, a brand that you will therefore at some point be very proud to have created. You in Nagaland have very unique opportunities. You are, a, you are, for us in mainland India, we look at Nagaland with a lot of intrigue. It's intriguing, it's mysterious, and it's exotic. And if I use these three words and build brands around these three premises, can I create a brand that's intriguing? Can I create a brand that's exotic? And can I create a brand that is mysterious. I believe you can. And if you add these three, they are recipes for premium brands around the world. Why can we not have enough partnerships using YI as a platform? If today we have 20,000 YI members, that's 20,000 touch points that you guys can use to create such intriguing, mysterious, premium brands in the rest of the country. Build your market, grow your market, because there is no other land of opportunity as the opportunity of what India provides. And nowhere ever has a country, the scale of ours, tried to change in the kind of speed we are trying to change today. And you're all part of that crucible of change. And if you miss out this opportunity, believe me, it's a lost opportunity. We're never going to get it back. Never in the past or in the conceivable future will this ever happen again. So I hope that with these little words, I've given you some nuggets in terms of what branding you should think about when you build your brands. Build your brands with, these, with the customer at the center of the equation and with India as your opportunity. Thank you very much.